This video was brought to you by Incogni. Last week, tech giant Nvidia saw the biggest single day gain in Wall Street history, making it America's third most valuable company. Fueled by the ongoing AI boom, Nvidia's stock has now risen by 600% in the last 18 months. But its parabolic rise does look a bit, well, bubbly. So in this video, we thought we'd take a look at both how Nvidia became one of the world's most valuable companies and whether this boom can really last. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start with a little bit of context. NVIDIA was founded by now CEO Jensen Huang and two other guys in California in 1993 and went public in 1999. For most of its first 20 years or so, NVIDIA focused on designing graphics processing units, or GPUs. Now, NVIDIA is what's known as a fabulous company, meaning that it doesn't actually manufacture its own chips. It just designs them and then outsources the manufacturing to someone else, usually the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Anyway, until relatively recently, these GPUs were mainly used in video games. We're not going to go into too much detail here, but the main difference between GPUs and CPUs is that GPUs break down complex tasks into thousands of separate tasks and then solve them simultaneously and in parallel rather than sequentially. This is obviously a massive simplification, but this is sort of what makes GPUs well suited to video games, where textures, lighting, and rendering of different shapes all have to be done at once. Anyway, Nvidia did pretty well off this, both because the video games industry experienced pretty steady growth for the past 30 years or so, and because Nvidia's high performance chips account for nearly four fifths of gaming GPUs. However, the company's fortunes improved dramatically in the late 2010s, with the rise of cryptocurrencies. That's because the enthusiasts quickly realized that Nvidia's GPUs were perfect for mining cryptocurrencies, especially Ethereum, and as such, demand skyrocketed. This was obviously great news for Nvidia, but it made the business vulnerable to crypto-related volatility, which is why Nvidia's stock tanked in 2018, and 2022. However, after falling over 60% in the year to November 2022, Nvidia's stock has enjoyed a meteoric and apparently unstoppable rise. By mid-2023, its market cap had more than doubled to a trillion dollars, surpassing both Meta and Tesla. Then, on February 21st, Nvidia's blockbuster earnings report, where the company announced a 265% jump in revenues, pushed it above $2 trillion, making Nvidia the third most valuable listed company in the US behind only Apple and Microsoft, but ahead of giants like Amazon and Alphabet. This represented a single day gain of $277 billion, the largest in Wall Street history. So what explains this stratospheric rise? Well, the short answer, as you might have guessed, is AI. Now, Nvidia doesn't actually have its own AI models or anything like that, but the company has heeded the well-worn advice. During a gold rush, sell shovels. This saying was inspired by the California gold rush, where many of the people who actually made the most money weren't the prospectors, but the people who sold shovels to the punters. If AI is the metaphorical gold, then Nvidia's chips are the shovels. Essentially, while GPUs are useful for running AI models, they're especially useful for training the models in the first place. This is basically because the task of training neural networks involves tons of repetitive smaller tasks, which is exactly what GPUs are good for. So since the release of ChatGPT in late 2022, executives have been racing to incorporate AI into their businesses, and that's created massive demand for Nvidia's GPUs. Nvidia is particularly well placed here because it has a near monopoly over specialist AI chips, controlling more than 95% of the market. This is both because Nvidia's chips are just really good, their computation speed has increased a thousandfold in the past decade, but also because Nvidia don't just provide the chips, it also provides the stuff required to actually use the chips. First, Nvidia provides a software called CUDA 
which allows customers to fine-tune chip performance and is now the industry standard. And second, NVIDIA provides the relevant networking services. Essentially, the training of AI models requires hundreds, if not thousands of chips to be used simultaneously. And these chips have to be connected by a network. Thanks to its purchase of networking giant Mellanox in 2019, NVIDIA now also controls something like 80% of that market too. So by providing the best chips, the best networking kit, and the best software, NVIDIA has developed a sort of moat that insulates itself from competitors, because any serious contender will need to beat them on all three. The question is then, can NVIDIA's boom last? Well, there's clearly a speculative element to its recent performance in the stock market, as evidenced by the sheer number of options contracts. But as we've hopefully demonstrated, its fundamentals are pretty strong. Nonetheless, as we see it, NVIDIA's future depends on three things. Firstly, it depends on whether the AI boom lasts. At the moment, people are pouring insane amount of monies into AI in the hopes that it ends up being a lucrative, world-altering technology. While this is of course understandable, given the impressive power of stuff like ChatGPT, AI might not turn out to be as great as its advocates claim. Chatbots might plateau, training costs might get too high, or we might never solve the hallucination problem. And even if AI does continue to improve, the amount of money sloshing around might still decrease, especially if interest rates go up or there's some sort of tech stock crash. The second thing this all depends on is whether NVIDIA can maintain its de facto monopoly. Already, NVIDIA's main competitor, AMD, has produced a chip that's generally considered to be better than NVIDIA's equivalent. And NVIDIA's main customers, big tech companies like Alphabet, Amazon, Meta, and Microsoft, have got so fed up with paying a monopolistic premium for NVIDIA chips that they've actually started designing their own. While NVIDIA's position looks relatively strong in the near future, in the long term, it's definitely not guaranteed. And it's possible that another firm will leapfrog NVIDIA in the same way that NVIDIA did to Intel. Thirdly, it also depends on the brewing US-China trade war. American sanctions have already reduced NVIDIA's sales in China, which previously accounted for about 25% of revenue. But NVIDIA has been able to mitigate against this damage by creating chips that, that fall just under America's sanction thresholds and by rerouting sales through Singapore where NVIDIA sales are growing faster than anywhere else. If, however, the trade war heats up and American sanctions escalate, this could make things significantly more difficult. All in all then, while there's probably a bit of a rational exuberance regarding stock price and clearly some medium-term risks, NVIDIA is clearly in an enviable position. It enjoys something nearing a monopoly on AI chips, and if AI ends up being the future-defining technology that advocates claim, NVIDIA could end up with one of the most important companies in the world. Clearly though, the state of the world is plagued by uncertainty and risk. And while you've been watching this video about NVIDIA, your personal information may have been sold or published online without you even knowing about it. Even while recording videos, we're constantly interrupted by robocalls. And if you're wondering why you've been getting so many random numbers calling your phone, well, the answer is the malevolent workings of shady forces called data brokers. These data brokers can collect and sell your personal information to anyone, from a company to an online criminal. This data can include your name and aliases, social security number, login credentials, home address, location history, online activity, and more. Even if you're not fussed about a phone call here or there, one day it could be a little call, but the next day a huge loan taken out in your name. In fact, that exact thing happened to me a few years ago. So if you want to protect your data, Incogni is here to help. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. Since many data brokers continue collecting your personal information even after they've removed it, Incogni also takes care that your data stays off the market by conducting repeated removal requests. So create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, if you use our link in the description, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video.